وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Praise be to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Dear viewers, we welcome you to a new episode of The Prophet's Prayer. Uh, last episode was stopped at the middle tashahud, and we listened to the proper recitation of At Tahiyyatu Lillah and so forth. Now, during this episode, inshallah, we're going to learn about moving the finger or pointing the index finger while reciting At Tashahud, whether the middle tashahud or the last tashahud. We're going also to learn about the difference between the middle tashahud sitting and the sitting of the last tashahud. Then we're going to study the issue of making dua and supplications after tashahud, taslim, and so forth. Now, anyway, whenever the musalli is sitting, even between the two sujuds, he would place both hands on both sides. So that the right palm would be placed on the right thigh and the left palm will be placed on the left thigh. And sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would stretch out his fingers to grab hold of his knees, and that's permissible as well. But if you are in the state of tashahud, the companions narrated a couple of hadith about Prophet Muhammad ﷺ describing how he would do with his index finger. One hadith which is narrated by Wa'il ibn Hujr, May Allah be pleased with him. He said that he witnessed the Prophet وسلم, shaking his finger while he was supplicating. And the entire tashahud is all about supplication. So accordingly, the scholars understood from that that the musalli is recommended to shake his finger while reciting at tashahud. There is, a, there is another hadith. The Prophet وسلم, would make number 53 by his fingers and that's by holding the middle finger with the thumb, then pointing with the index finger towards the Qibla. Then, he would just keep pointing the finger towards the Qibla as long as he's reciting at tashahud As we said before, this is just one of the forms of the prayer, and it should not affect by any mean the validity of the Salah. As long as the Musalli would take care of the arcane, the wajibat, and so forth. The next thing we're going to talk about, what after, what's after the middle tashahud? The shaykh is going to rise up to the third rak'ah, and we're going to learn a very important sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ used to do, which is making takbir and raising the hands along with the takbir. So the shaykh would demonstrate Allahu Akbar. By that we have seen this is the fourth position where the Prophet ﷺ was witnessed by many of the companions while raising the hands while making takbir. The very first takbir, takbir al-ihram. The second for each rak'ah while going for ruku'ah. The third, each rak'ah while rising up from ruku'ah. And the third after the middle tashahud upon going to the third rak'ah. This is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Whatever we discussed in the first and the second rak'ah is applicable in the third, if it is uli maghrib, or the third and the fourth, if it is one of the four rak'ah's prayers. Except, in the third and the fourth rak'ah, the musalli does not have to recite anything after surat al-fatiha of any of the verses of the Qur'an. But he would make ruku'ah normally, makes the Jude normally, and of course, would make sure that he would achieve tranquility in each move, because tranquility is a requirement in the Salah. Some of the scholars considered 
is one of the conditions of the validity of the salah. Now, uh, I think it is very important to compare between the sitting of the middle tashahud and the last tashahud. The middle tashahud, like any sitting between two sajdas, between two prostrations, where the musalli would make his left foot like a cushion beneath his bottom and would sit up his right foot with the toes pointed towards the qibla. This sitting is known as al-iftirash in Arabic language. While in the last tashahud, there is another sitting which is known as at tawarruk You see the changes that all of a sudden that the left shin and the left foot would go all the way beneath the right shin. And the musalli would completely rest on the left side of his bottom. This setting is known as a tawarruk and the musalli would sit this way, this position in the last tashahud. This is also one of the traditions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while praying. And of course, not as the finger pointing towards the qibla, as long as the person is reciting at tashahud or at tahiyyat. Of course, in the last tashahud, you're going to recite the complete course from beginning to end. Tashahud and as salatul ibrahimiya After you finish from it, as we have learned before, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to observe regularly some beautiful supplications to seek refuge with Allah from four things. From the fire of hell, from the torment of the grave, from the trial of life and death, and the trial of the false messiah. So let's listen to the supplication of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi after the last tashahud and before making taslim. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min athabi jahannam wa min athabi al-qabr wa min fitnati al-mahya wal-mamat wa min fitnati al-masih al-dajjal. Also, you may supplicate with any other prayer. For instance, it was reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Allahumma aghfir li ma qaddamtu wa ma akhartu wa ma asrartu wa ma a'lantu wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni. Anta al-muqaddimu wa anta al-muakhir la ilaha illa ant. Plus, any other prayer if you wish and if you, continue, if you desire to continue. <coughs> but once you're done, now you're ready to seal up your prayer. As we have learned, the prayer begins with a takbir and ends with a taslim, which is also mandatory. So that you would make taslim to the right side. The Prophet ﷺ was seen while making taslim that they could see the whiteness of his right cheek while he was making taslim to the right and the whiteness of his left cheek while he was making taslim to the left. So watch closely the shaykh while making taslim. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. You may as well say while making taslim to the right, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. While making taslim to the left, he will say, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wait, don't go nowhere. Remember, we discussed the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that once the servant of Allah finishes the prayer, as long as he's sitting in the same place of the prayer, making dhikr, the angels would supplicate and pray for him. They would say, Allahumma aghfir lah, Allahumma arham. O oh Allah, forgive him his sins. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. So never waste this opportunity. There is still some more work to do, which is also voluntary and optional, which is known as khitam salah You begin by asking Allah for forgiveness. As the Shaykh will say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. 
تباركت ربنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us amongst the adhkar after the salah is to say subhanallah 33 times and to repeat alhamdulillah 33 times as well and also to say Allahu Akbar 33 times and you seal up the hundred by saying la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir imagine for each time you say subhanallah that's one hasana and as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated in one hadith al hasanatu bi 'ashr amthalha so for each time you say subhanallah you gain 10 good deeds alhamdulillah 10 good deeds that the 100 times are multiplied by 10 that's 1000 the reward for saying this adhkar after finishing the salah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also would recite ayatul kursi and would recite qul huwa allahu ahad qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas so let's listen to the shaykh reciting them الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. Well, that was known as ختام الصلاة or the seal of the prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, actually many people ask, is there any difference between the format of the prayer for men? versus women? In fact, no. There is no such sound reference that says that women's prayer is any different than men. Accordingly, whatever we describe and illustrated is applicable for women as well. Dear viewers, we tried our best to collect the most sound hadith that describes the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the next few episodes, inshallah, We'll be talking about the common mistakes and the factors which will enable the musalli to develop khushu'a and tranquility in his or her prayer. So please stay tuned. May Allah bless you and leave you in the protection of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.